welcome back to another episode of Simply Science. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about magnets. Um, you guys already know the basics of magnets. You know that you can do certain magic tricks with magnets. You know that you can play with them and make them kind of stick together and make them kind of push apart. And we're just going to talk more about that today. So firstly, what is a magnet? A magnet is just an object that exerts this invisible force. That force is actually called the magnetic field. So it's actually impossible to see the magnetic field unless you have tiny pieces of metal. Uh, we call them iron filings. And if we put a magnet in those iron filings, you can actually see the magnetic field and where the magnet is strongest. And a magnet is always strongest on the ends or the poles as we call them. So basically the rule for magnets is that opposites attract and likes repel, which means that the opposite ends of the magnet will be attracted to each other, but like ends will repel each other. So the magnet has a north and a south pole. Every magnet, no exceptions. Even if you chop a magnet in half, it's going to readjust itself and still have a north and a south pole. So all the rule is saying is that if I have two north poles, they will repel. And if I have a north and a south pole, they will attract. Same thing, I could have two south poles touching or trying to touch. They will repel, they won't stick together. But if I flip one and have a north and a south, they'll attract. So the general rule, opposites attract and likes repel. Just like this. So the reason a compass always, always points north is because in the center of the earth, there's this giant molten core of iron, which basically means like melted iron in the core of our earth. And as we know, iron is very, very attracted to magnets and is also used for magnets. So a compass needle is also made out of a magnet and that compass needle always wants to point to the center of the earth. So that's the reason that you can use compasses and they've been using compasses for thousands of years because it will always point you north. So the earth is basically a giant magnet. Great question. So you might be thinking, yes, I have magnets on my fridge, maybe in a couple toys, and those are the places that magnets are in my life. But like poetry, magnets are actually everywhere in so many of our daily devices, the things we use, the things we love, like your fridge, your television, your iPhone, your iPad, your computer, fridge doors, rotating doors, microwave, anything with a motor, speakers, can openers, compasses, radios, give me a tape, give me a tape, give me a tape, give me a tape, give me a So there are so many devices and things that we use in our everyday life that actually have magnets in them that we didn't even know about. Another excellent question. So there are lots and lots and lots of different types of magnets, but there are a few that I will show you here today. So there are bar magnets, different kinds of bar magnets, different sizes, different lengths, but these are bar magnets here. We also have U magnets or horseshoe magnets, and these ones you can just tell by the shape where they get their name. Uh, we also have this random assortment of magnets as well. We have ring magnets and button magnets as well. An interesting question. So first, I want you to hypothesize this question. Do you think that all metals are magnetic? And your hypothesis, I want you to actually comment in the comment section below. So 
yes, Miss Rachel, I think all metals are magnetic, or no, Miss Rachel, I don't think all metals are magnetic. So quickly pause here and leave me a comment with your hypothesis and let's try some out now. We have steel, we have aluminum, we've got some nickel, copper, bronze, and finally brass. So we're gonna see which of these metals is attracted to the magnet. Okay, first up, let's try steel. So we can see here with the steel that it is actually attracted to the magnet. It's kind of a weak attraction, it's not super strong. It's kind of pulling it along, but I couldn't pick up the steel with my magnet. Well, not very well anyway. Okay, next up we have aluminum. So as you can see, I'm not able to pull it. I can't pick it up does not attract to a magnet. Next up we have the copper. Okay, it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Can't pick it up, can't drag it, not working. Okay, bronze. Mm, no, nothing happening here. Can't pick it up, can't move it, no attraction. Next up we have brass. No attraction here. The magnet is not attracted at all. No movement. And finally, we have nickel. Wow, and as you can see, that's a very strong attraction. My nickel actually moved towards my magnet and it is stuck on there good. So, are all metals attracted to magnets or does a magnet attract all metals? And the answer is a resounding no. In actual fact, the only metals that are attracted to magnets are iron, nickel, and cobalt. And they don't have to be pure iron, nickel, or cobalt, but any metals that have a little sprinkling of one of those three things in it will be attracted to a magnet. So next up we have a little experiment that I like to call the levitating magnet experiment or the floating magnet experiment and this is actually really easy to do at home if you have the right materials so firstly all you need to do is gather a couple really basic materials so you can see here that i have a pencil i have a ring magnet we call them ring magnets i have quite a few of them uh, one side is negative and one side is positive. When you flip it, you change what side it's on. And then I also have a squishy foam ring to stick my pencil in. Now you don't necessarily need a foam ring. You could have a piece of clay or Play-Doh, just something to stick your pencil in so that it can stand up by itself. So for my procedure, all I'm gonna do is take my pencil and stick it in my foam ring. And then I'm gonna slide on a ring magnet. Then I'm gonna take another ring magnet and slide it on as well. So these are opposites. We don't want that. We want the same side. We want them to repel. So I'm flipping the magnet and I'll slide it back down. And you'll see that they won't stick together. They're repelling. And that's what we want. And then we'll try again. We'll do another one. So if you look closely, they're not touching, they're repelling each other and they won't stick together, which is causing the magnets to actually float. You can see as I add more ring magnets that the space between the ring magnets is getting smaller because the pressure is pushing down. But what's really cool is that they're all still floating. So that's why it's called the floating magnet experiment. See, the more I add, the more squished together it gets, but they're still floating. Here is a close-up view of the floating magnet experiment. You guys can see a bit better how the magnets aren't touching, that they are literally hovering in the air, which is really, really cool. And a lot of magic tricks are actually done using magnets as well. Okay. Great work today, everyone. So let's review what we learned. So we learned that magnets are attracted to their opposite and they repel if they're the same.
We also learned that Earth is a giant magnet and that a compass will always point north. We learned that not all metals are attracted to magnets and that only metals with iron, nickel, or cobalt are actually attracted to magnets. And finally, we learned that magnets are in lots of things, lots of everyday objects, anything with a motor, many, many devices, electrical things especially. And next time, we're gonna talk about how electricity and magnetism are related and how they kind of create each other. And that's something to look forward to next day. So guys, now that we're all wrapped up here, you can go into your Edmodo folder and click the sort it, magnetic or not, little interactive game. It's just for fun. We'll do a wrap up little quiz on Edmodo on Thursday. But for today, you can just play around on that link. There's also a story there it's kind of a, a little kid story but it has a lot of poetry in it as well so it's very cross curricular which i know you guys love so check out that link that i've posted and i will see you next time on another episode of simply science Hello darkness my old friend